NASA engineers are freaking out. SpaceX just pulled off something they said was impossible, transforming their orbital launch mount in less than 30 days into a revolutionary adapter system that has the entire space industry talking. Four explosive failures in a row nearly killed the Starship program. NASA, the Department of Defense, everyone was losing faith. But what SpaceX just installed at Starbase changes everything. Ship 37 is now 90% ready for static fire. Workers are racing against a three-week deadline. And this single flight could either save or destroy the entire future of Mars colonization. The most shocking part? SpaceX might be planning something even NASA didn't see coming. Back-to-back -back static fires that could accelerate their timeline by months. Let's dive right in. Picture this. NASA's top engineers gathered in emergency sessions, watching their Mars timeline crumble. Four consecutive Starship explosions had turned SpaceX from hero to zero. Boeing executives were secretly celebrating. Blue Origin started talking louder about New Glenn. The Department of Defense was questioning billion-dollar contracts. But NASA's real nightmare? They'd bet everything on Starship for Artemis moon missions. Without it working, America's return to the moon was dead in the water. Then something impossible happened. SpaceX didn't just fix the problem. They revolutionized everything. What SpaceX pulled off in 30 days shouldn't exist in aerospace. Major launch pad modifications take 6 to 12 months minimum. Boeing needs years for similar changes. NASA takes decades to approve new launch infrastructure. SpaceX question mark. They rebuilt their entire orbital launch mount in one month. On July 18th, workers rolled in the LR-11,000 crane, a 1,100-ton monster that can literally lift skyscrapers. What happened next left industry veterans speechless. They lifted a completely redesigned transport stand weighing over 100 tons and placed it with millimeter precision into the launch mount. But here's the kicker. This wasn't just installation. SpaceX had secretly been welding I-beams and reinforcements for weeks, completely rebuilding the platform's core structure. They'd essentially performed open-heart surgery on a launch pad while keeping it operational. The question everyone's asking, how did they hide this engineering masterpiece from NASA's watchful eyes? Here's where it gets insane. The booster quick disconnect system was never designed for Starship. Think of it like trying to charge a Tesla with a gas pump nozzle. The connections literally don't match. Most aerospace engineers would declare it impossible and recommend building a new pad from scratch. Cost? $500 million minimum. Timeline? Three years. SpaceX said hold my coffee and did it in three weeks. They faced temperatures that would melt steel, liquid methane at negative 259 degrees Fahrenheit and liquid oxygen at negative 297 degrees Fahrenheit flowing at thousands of gallons per minute. One microscopic leak means a massive explosion that could level the entire facility. The electrical challenge was even worse. Starship needs completely different power and data connections than Super Heavy. We're talking about systems that control 33 rocket engines producing 16.7 million pounds of thrust. SpaceX engineers literally cut holes in the BQD hood, something considered engineering blasphemy. They installed custom piping that roots over the top connecting to support frames that didn't exist before. Industry experts called it controlled insanity. But was this apparent madness actually genius? While the world watched Ship 37's preparation, SpaceX was playing 4D chess. Ship 38 wasn't just being built, it was racing toward completion in parallel. Heat shield installed June 17th. Forward flaps mounted July 20th. Full systems integration happening simultaneously. Why keep two starships combat ready at once? Traditional aerospace, test one, fail, investigate, rebuild, repeat. Each cycle takes six to 18 months. SpaceX just shattered that paradigm completely. Their strategy, back-to-back -back static fire tests with zero downtime between vehicles. If Ship 37 reveals issues, Ship 38 launches immediately with fixes. No delays, no waiting just relentless iteration. NASA's internal emails reveal they're fundamentally reassessing development methodologies based on SpaceX's approach. 
Translation. They're scrambling to copy what they previously called impossible. But here's what really shocked them. Elon Musk's July 15th commitment wasn't optimism. It was a declaration of war against traditional aerospace timelines. Launch in approximately three weeks means Flight 10 must happen before August 10th. The domino sequence that must happen perfectly. Static fire ship 37, complete stand removal, BQD restoration to launch configuration, ship 37 rollback for payload installation, flight termination system installation, FAA license, approval, final launch preparations. Any single failure breaks the entire chain. Yet SpaceX seems confident they've solved the impossible puzzle, the twist that changes everything. They might not need to remove the stand at all. Ship 37 will carry eight dummy Starlink satellites. Sounds routine until you realize the devastating truth. Starship has never successfully deployed a single satellite. Not one. For a vehicle designed to revolutionize satellite deployment, this is a credibility crisis. NASA's commercial crew program specifically requires proven payload capability. The Artemis Moon program depends on Starship's cargo capacity. If Ship 37 fails satellite deployment, it could delay lunar missions by years and cost NASA billions in contract penalties. But industry analysts notice something strange. Why exactly eight satellites? That number matches SpaceX's next-generation Starlink constellation requirements perfectly. Are these really dummy payloads, or is SpaceX planning to pull off the ultimate surprise? Here's where the story gets controversial. Normal FAA protocol requires complete investigation closure before the next flight. Flight 9's explosion should have grounded Starship for six-plus months. Instead, SpaceX already has preliminary Flight 10 approval. How is this possible? Sources reveal Congress has been pressuring the FAA to accelerate commercial space licensing. The agency is caught between safety protocols and political pressure to keep America competitive against China's rapid space advances. But there's another factor nobody discusses publicly. Flight 9's failure actually helped SpaceX's case. The explosion happened during re-entry, not launch. This proves the orbital systems work correctly, exactly what NASA needs for moon missions. The FAA may have realized that delaying SpaceX could hand China the keys to space dominance. Every successful Starship flight accelerates Mars colonization by approximately six months. Flight 10's success could mean humans on Mars by 2029 instead of 2030 plus. But failure has catastrophic consequences. Another explosion could push human Mars missions into the 2030s, giving Blue Origin and China time to close the gap. The calculation is brutal. SpaceX isn't just testing a rocket. They're fighting for civilization's future in space. Blue Origin has gone suspiciously quiet about New Glenn progress. Industry insiders suggest they're waiting for Flight 10 results before announcing major timeline changes. Boeing's Space Launch System team is nervous. If Starship proves reliable for deep space missions, NASA will question SLS's $4.1 billion per launch cost versus Starship's estimated $10 million per launch. China's space program has accelerated heavy lift rocket development in direct response. They know the window to compete is closing rapidly. Even European space agency officials admit they're recalibrating expectations based on SpaceX's rapid progress. The removable stand design isn't just convenient, it's game-changing infrastructure. Think of it like a smartphone dock system that can be swapped for different devices in minutes instead of months. This flexibility enables rapid testing cycles, faster iteration, and ultimately accelerated Mars progress. While competitors build single-purpose facilities, SpaceX created the world's first truly modular launch infrastructure. The implications are staggering. SpaceX can now configure launch pads for different missions in hours. Want to launch cargo to Mars? Swap the stand. Need to catch a returning starship? Different configuration? Planning lunar missions? Another setup. But here's the question keeping Boeing and Blue Origin executives awake. If SpaceX can redesign major infrastructure in 30 days, what else are they capable of that we haven't seen yet? Flight 10 isn't just another test. It's the validation flight for everything SpaceX promises about space colonization. Super Heavy must execute perfect landing choreography. Starship must survive the brutal re-entry that has killed multiple vehicles. Payload deployment must work flawlessly.
Success unlocks billions in NASA contracts, validates the entire Starship architecture, and confirms SpaceX's Mars timeline. Failure questions whether the Starship concept works at all and gives competitors precious time to catch up. The vehicle sitting on Pad A represents more than engineering achievement. It embodies humanity's next evolutionary step as a spacefaring civilization. What's really at stake goes far beyond rocket testing. China's space program is advancing rapidly with their own heavy lift capabilities. If Starship fails repeatedly, China could achieve lunar bases and Mars missions first, shifting global power dynamics for generations. NASA knows this. The Department of Defense knows this. That's why the pressure on SpaceX is unlike anything in aerospace history. This single flight could determine whether America leads humanity to the stars or watches from Earth, as others claim the high frontier. The countdown to Flight 10 isn't just measuring time, it's measuring the future of human civilization itself. So here we are. NASA went from calling SpaceX's approach impossible to secretly copying their methods. A 30-day engineering miracle that breaks every rule in aerospace two starships ready for back-to-back -back testing, and a timeline that could put humans on Mars by 2029. But Flight 10 isn't just about proving Starship works. It's about proving that rapid iteration can beat decades of traditional development, that a private company can move faster than entire government agencies, that the future of space belongs to those bold enough to attempt the impossible. The real shock isn't what SpaceX built. It's how quickly they're rewriting the rules of space exploration itself. When Flight 10 launches in the next few weeks, we're not just watching a rocket test. We're witnessing the moment human civilization takes its next evolutionary leap. But here's what I'm really curious about. If SpaceX can transform launch infrastructure this fast, what other impossible projects are they working on right now that we haven't seen yet? What do you think comes after Flight 10? Are we about to see SpaceX's next big surprise? Let me know in the comments below. And if you want to stay ahead of the space race, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. Because trust me, what's coming next will blow your mind even more. SpaceX shocked NASA with an impossible trick. Their testing site is destroyed, so they modified Launch Pad 1 in just days to keep Starship alive. But that's nothing compared to this. They just pulled a dead rocket booster from the ocean floor after eight months. Booster 13 crashed in November 2024. Everyone forgot about it. Then suddenly in July 2025, SpaceX spent millions to drag it up. Why now? What secret did they discover down there? Let's dive right in. Here's the situation that left NASA engineers speechless. July 14th, 2025. SpaceX's main testing facility at Massey's site lies in ruins. Complete destruction. Think of this like Formula One's Monaco Grand Prix track suddenly vanishing three weeks before the race. Any normal company would delay for months, maybe years. But Elon drops this bombshell. Next Starship launch in about three weeks. That means August 4th. Three weeks to do what should take three years. NASA engineers called it impossible. Industry experts said it couldn't be done. SpaceX said, hold my methane, and got to work. They grabbed Launch Pad 1 and started performing surgical modifications that defied every engineering handbook ever written. Picture this. They lifted a support ring the size of a house and mounted it onto the orbital launch mount. It's like trying to install a basketball hoop on a skyscraper while the building is still under construction in a hurricane, with your eyes closed. But here's where it gets insane. Static fire tests aren't just light engine, see if it works. They require precision fuel systems that took NASA decades to perfect, temperature controls that operate within fractions of degrees, and safety protocols written in the blood of previous failures. SpaceX was recreating all of this in days. The quick disconnect piping alone is like rewiring the electrical system of the International Space Station while it's orbiting at 17,000 miles per hour. Yet somehow SpaceX engineers made it look routine. Why the desperate rush? What's driving this timeline that borders on madness? The answer lies eight months underwater. 
November 2024, Booster 13 crashes into the Gulf of Mexico after its flight test. Standard procedure in the space industry. Write it off, move on, build another one. Space junk happens. Except SpaceX didn't follow standard procedure. Eight months later, they sent the LB Jill salvage ship to drag this waterlogged wreck from the ocean floor. The Port of Brownsville manifest shows one cryptic entry. Load rocket parts 1 million tons. One massive ton of twisted metal and corroded systems. Here's what doesn't add up. SpaceX has lost boosters before. They've crashed engines, destroyed test articles, and blown up entire rockets. They've never gone back for any of them after eight months of saltwater destruction. So what makes Booster 13 different? What did they discover in that underwater graveyard that was worth millions to recover? What information was so valuable that they'd risk their entire testing schedule to fish it out? The timing screams desperation. Right when they need to rush their testing program, right when they're frantically adapting Launchpad 1, they suddenly decide to salvage a dead booster. That's not environmental cleanup. That's treasure hunting. But what treasure could survive eight months at the bottom of the Gulf? SpaceX's official line, environmental responsibility. Clean up the ocean, protect marine life, be good corporate citizens. Sounds noble, sounds reasonable, sounds completely false. Here's the problem with that story. If environmental protection was the real concern, they would have retrieved Booster 13 immediately after the crash, not after eight months of saltwater corrosion. Environmental agencies have strict timelines for cleanup operations. Eight months late isn't compliance. It's something else entirely. Saltwater destroys everything it touches. After eight months underwater, the engines are scrap metal. The fuel systems are corroded beyond recognition. The structure is compromised. The avionics are fried. So what could possibly be valuable enough to justify a multi-million dollar salvage operation? Unless they weren't looking for hardware. Unless they were looking for something that could survive underwater. Unless they were looking for data 